day and welcome back to the first time home buyer show as you know i'm your host sd class and we've got amazing content coming to you live every weekday this week we've got zaman to guacamala with the private property podcast that's live at 7 p.m on facebook instagram and youtube and of course chad vavieros travels around in zanzi johannesburg looks at gorgeous mansions to townhouses to beautiful apartments in hyde park that is live every friday and monday at 8 p.m and let's not forget the first time home buyer comes to your screen every Wednesday night at 8 p.m. And of course, Mbali comes to your screens with the Farming Podcast every Tuesday and Thursday evening at 8 p.m. And without further ado, this evening I'm sitting with the absolutely amazing man, extremely passionate about property, his real estate journey, fairly new, but he's gotten into it and he knows the ropes and he's here to show us how to do it and also the pros and the cons of the property industry and even just buying property to begin with. Good afternoon, Tumelo. How are you? Hi, SD. Nice to meet you. Uh, thank you for the kind words. Oh, another young <laughs> guest, guys. Another young gentleman. <laughs> Tumelo, you're 26 years old. You've been in real estate for about two years, you said. How's that been? And also, actually, let's before we even get there, why property? Um, yeah, so I've just slowly grown a passion of property. I think it's something uh, from an early age I always wanted to do, wanted to be a part of. Uh, primarily the property and just property development, you know. Mm. I think uh, just my ultimate goal is just to build generational wealth and legacy. And I think, you know, having a building out there that's built and you see it there and just like, you know, I was a part of that, I built that, I made that. That's something that I want to have and carry for my family and for generations to come. So mm. I think that's the main drive for me going to property. But also I think it makes sense. Property is a good investment uh, to invest uh, in in. in uh, finances and things like that. So yeah, that's why I choose property for sure. And there's something so powerful about a tangible uh, uh, generational wealth or tangible asset. Exactly. Uh, that you know you can leave behind. It's like leaving a legacy, but it's there and people can see it and people can access it. Um, so I love that. And I want to end off with that question actually about generational wealth and financial freedom because you said that's your ultimate goal. Exactly. Right. So what are you actually doing to reach that ultimate goal? So. Basically, it's just uh, building my portfolio in my mm. property sector. Right now, I'm starting off as a real estate agent. Um, you know, something long before I didn't think it's something I'd do. A lot of times when people think about property, when they think about property investment, they think it's all about just purchasing a property, getting a tenant or house flipping. And sure, those are things that I sort of looked into doing in beginning my whole portfolio. But, you know, you can start from the ground and you yeah. can start being a pro pro property practitioner. Mm. Uh, like your real estate agent and from there you'll be able to learn mm. and you know have sort of these networks and uh, people like contractors and all those people there in the industry as well it helps you learn it helps you grow exactly. so that's how I'm sort of starting my journey uh, so I'm doing real estate and I want to qualify to be a principal real estate agent oh, nice. that way you're able to trade under your own name instead of under a, a franchise or a business mm. um, and then that way as well as I can form my own property development company as well be able to uh, meet with other contractors, you know, you know your Baldwin properties, how yeah. they sort of, that's sort of the ultimate goal, that's sort of the business that I want to go into. Mm. So that's how I want to uh, build my sort of generational wealth and then be able to support my family. I think, especially as a young black man, um, a lot of things we do are first time, you know. Yeah. We're the first to go to varsity, we're yeah. the first to be doctors in our families, to be lawyers. Mm. Um, so I want to also be that one to uh, build that generous wealth for my family. And, be and for first. you, of course, it's also you're the first, exactly, right? Exactly. I love that. So also, I wanted to take it back to how you spoke about, because uh, you're very passionate about development. I feel sure. like development is your underlying goal yeah. and everything relies on that. So how were you introduced to property to begin with? Well. See, that's the thing. And I think, uh, you know, we'll talk about obviously the organization that I'm a part of. Yeah. Um, but a lot of times when you're young, you're not exposed to such things, mm. right? Um, I was really exposed into uh, property and property development in 2017. Uh, I had a friend, uh, he was reading at the time a very famous book, uh, Rich Dad Poor Dad, yeah. by Robert Kawasaki. <laughs> um, and then it's in the same year, there was these uh, property workshops. Mm -hmm. um, that you know you bring you pay and it's like a week-long workshop yeah uh, you pay to attend and basically they train you on ways how to enter property uh, investment whether it's just buying and flipping houses mm -hmm. whether it's from the ground up property developments or just uh, buying a property for rentals yeah so those are sort of the workshop we went to so um, you know at the time I couldn't afford it but uh, I was grateful enough to have a, a friend who could help me you know 
uh, pay for the ticket. And so I attended and from there that's what I knew what I wanted to do. And primarily more into property development because I just like the idea of building something from the ground. Yeah. You know? um, that's how I feel, you know, it's the legacy I want to do. I think if you look now, I mean, 10 years back, the waterfall precinct was nothing but dust. Yeah. But now what has turned out to, it's something that's so it's, great and yeah. it's something that I also want to build. So I think mm. that's why, that's the underlining thing. So yeah, around two, 2017, that's when you know, you were. I was more aligned and more into you know the, the, the property development aspect of it. Yeah. Let's take it to the to the organisation. Sure. Uh, and before we even get there, could you tell our audience a little bit about the organisation and what exactly they did for you? Yes. Well, so the organisation is called Youth in Property Association, mm -hmm. uh, YIPA in short. Mm -hmm. uh, we are an MPO. Uh, we established actually in 2017 in Cape Town. Yeah. And what we're doing and what we're aiming is to transform the property industry. And how we do it, we want to increase the active participation of the youth, uh, primarily the black youth, mm -hmm. in the property sector. And we do that by creating opportunities in your employment, in your entrepreneurship, as well as in education. Mm -hmm. All right. So they formed in 2017, right at the times when my you know passion in property was was forming. And you know what they did for me, and is that what we want to do for the rest of the youth in our country is one bring awareness into the property sector, right, and in careers. Mm. in the property sector like i said a lot of times when we think about that we just think about property investing and buying property but there's so many careers around the property sector right. one that's also important is what you can study mm. right so instead of your traditional doctors we're giving more opportunities in your you know your field of study so what i do primarily in the in the organization is i work with grade 11s and grade 12s mm. right around in the in the high school right at the time when they think about career paths and what they want to study. Mm. And I present to them, obviously, these opportunities in the property sector. We also want to partner with organizations to offer bursaries. Mm. Um, and then what we also do is we do job sharing programs as well. So that's that's part of what the organization do. Um, and you also want to give access to people in the property sectors in terms of uh, you know your property conferences, which most of the times are very expensive. To right. Rent. So we offer discounted or free tickets for people to be in these spaces. Mm. Um, so yeah, that's uh, uh, the meat of what we do. Right. Um, and over the four years, we've grown tremendously. Have over a thousand members. Oh wow! Uh, now we've also secured a sponsorship with uh, yeah, Liberty Two Degrees, um, and we've also been in affiliations with Sapoa, your property sector council. You know all those things, and I think it's a it's a great initiative. Mm. I I particularly love that you work with the youth, grade eleven and twelve. Such a prime time for kids to make those final decisions, right? What was the biggest lesson you've learned from them? Uh, I think the biggest lesson is that these young people are actually curious. Yeah. And you know, being able to provide this information, this is the information that they want. And mm. I think also just coming back to how I grew up when I was in high school. You know, yeah. These are things that I would have wished would have happened, happened to me. Happened to you, yeah. Um, and I think that's why I'm so passionate about it because I know there's a need for, for mm. such things. So yeah, they, they're very curious people. In, in, in that sense, you find um, more people who actually then realize how passionate they are in the, about property exactly. and the things they want to do. And I think that's, that's the beautiful part about it. Um, mm. Just engaging with them, bringing awareness, educating them about mm. it. Uh, yeah, I think the biggest lesson is that people are curious, they want this information. And I think it's, it's, it's good that we are in this position to be able to do that. And to introduce them to something that they thought they may never ever come across, no, or maybe no, 10 years later. Exactly. I love that. So what's the biggest lesson you've taught them? Um, <laughs> I'm sure you're teaching them lots of, to them it's obviously a big lesson every day or sure. you know, when you're with them, but something that maybe stood out to you and you know, uh, that you remember. Um, I, think, I think it's just put yourself out there. Mm. I think that's one of my most important lessons. Um, is put yourself out there, whatever opportunity they come across, grab it with both hands mm. and grab it tight, you know. Um, I was like that before, uh, I mean, not just in your career, but in your sports and things yeah. like that. And, you know, meet new people, engage with people. Network. Network, yeah. exactly. That's one of the business, especially leaving your high school, going into your varsity today. I think that's something that's very important. Yeah. Um, you know, people that you want to be in classes with are going to be future leaders and CEOs and things like that. So it's, it's good to build that network, right? Yeah. There, you guys are all in the same level and mm. in order to work uh, better uh, and collaborate in the future. Mm. Tamila, when was the time when you took that piece mm. of advice and applied it to your own life? I think for me, I did it at a very young age. I did it oh, wow. on high school all the way to varsity. I think 
the I think the other question is when did that sort of now fall back? Right. You know, because of your challenges in, right. in school, in university, you know, you tend to be a bit more reserved now because mm. of the challenges you face in your life. Uh, but yeah, I've been like that from high school, uh, and I'm trying to continue that and take my own advice in mm. that. Uh, and I think that's why I'm in, in, in sort of like uh, platforms like this. Exactly. Putting myself out there mm. uh, and you know, bringing awareness and just showing people that you know you can you can achieve things that you want to yeah. put your mind into. I love that because I, I feel like, you know, even just talking to you just before the show, there's so many things that you have gone through that have taught you lessons. And I love especially the fact that you're giving back. Um, off topic, and you're probably not going to be prepared for this. But uh, a question I, I wanted to, if someone came to you and was like, hey, what's your story? How do you respond to that? Like, where do I start? Yeah. <laughs> where do I start? I mean... Obviously, not to get too personal into of it, course, but yeah. yeah, I've had my struggles. Mm. Uh, look, my I think my sort of journey mm -hmm. to where I was to now, uh, I've always been sort of in a straight path in a room. Oh, yeah. It was pre planned from you know from high school, yeah. Uh, you know, get to high school, do well in high school, um, apply for a varsity. So, I was accepted in UCT, mm -hmm. studying electrical engineering, mm -hmm. um, and yeah, you know, first two years being there, were okay, and then you know. <laughs> things started being bad yeah. and now you talk about your mental health as well mm. so it's been a tough journey and I think also what I did not understand before mm. uh, in my family and, and coming up to when you're an adult and you start understanding situations was you know we're not well off and, right um, I was in varsity uh, mainly because of a bursary right if I did not have that I would not have that opportunity oh, wow, yeah. of education you know mm. what I mean so being struck by those realities also like very really hit hard. Yeah. Um, but I always been telling myself just never to give up. Um, stay true to who you are. Stay yeah. true to your ambitions because I knew I'm a very ambitious person. Yeah. Um, you know, there's a lot of things I want to achieve in my life, and although you get your your very tough years, your tough things, just never give up. Keep pushing. Mm. Keep focused, and yeah, I, I think I've I'm still growing. I'm mm. still learning. Um, but I think I'm at a stage now where I, I understand better right. how to handle sort of um, tough situations and how to make that grow you instead of put you down. Exactly. Yeah. And I think that's such a beautiful message because we have quite a lot of young viewers who watch the show and I think, you know, keep pushing. I, I know it sounds very easy to say. It's, very, yeah. <laughs> it's so much easier to say than to do, you know, because you do get those moments. You know, there are kids in university who just feel demotivated exactly. every single day and we don't know how to just get up. Yeah. But I think, yeah, you're right. If anything, we need to learn to tell ourselves. A lot of the times on the show, we talk about um, self-empowerment yes. and knowing thyself in order to even start. Up. And property and, and self, you feel like they're so far apart. but. Exactly. You know, if you don't know who you are or what it is that you want even, you know, your short-term, long-term goals, how do you reach your property goal? On that note, yeah. Tumelo. So, yeah, so, I mean, you, yeah. said it, you said it perfectly. Yeah. Um, when, when is the time for us to discover ourselves yeah. and what to do and things sure. that we love to do, you know? Yeah. And, and I, think, I think part of my journey and part of being Yepa is mm. I'll be able to go to these kids and tell them, look, it's mm. it's it's okay to take risks. It's exactly. okay to explore. Exactly. And find thyself and you know, empower yourself and, and that's how you grow and it's also okay to make mistakes. Yeah. That's also very important. Oh yeah. Make mistakes in life, but that's how you grow, that's how you learn. Mm. And then you better yourself. Mm. And to not like beat yourself up about it. Exactly. You know, a lot of the times we make this mistake and we, we give up completely. Yeah, do that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> oh really? Yeah. No, you beat yourself up, yeah. you know, like, but like I say, it's just having that mentality of just never giving up and just mm. staying strong. You'll, you'll get through those times. And exactly. there are good times. There are good times. There are great times. Mm -hmm. So you will get there. For sure. I wanted to actually, this is again off topic, characteristics that you've learned, you know, from being in the organization. Because hearing you talk, the one thing that came to mind was patience, mm. which is so difficult. Yes. What other things have you picked up um, that one needs to, again, to develop thyself? Characteristics we need to have in order to keep pushing and to reach our property goal. Um, I think uh, one important thing is is, is uh, having support or seeking mm. support and help. Yeah. You can't do all this thing by yourself. Yeah. Unfortunately, um, you know I've tried. I've been a very independent person myself. That's how I grew up. But you know, seeking help doesn't make you feel weak. Exactly. You know? That also a part of empowering yourself mm. because you can go to someone who is more experienced, who also has had those sort of challenges, um, and speak to them and get support from them. Um, so I've learned that yeah, support is something that's very important. Yeah. 
uh, not to keep to yourself. It's good to ask for advice. It's good to ask for help. Mm. Um, you know, mentor, mentoring, I think, is something that's very, very vital. Um, when you're in your varsities, when you're in your high school, even when you're working. You know? Right. Um, so, yeah, I think that's one of the, the other lessons that I really learned is the support is, is very important. You, sorry, you, listening to you speak brings up all these gems because <laughs> I literally, you know what, I because I, now I feel like giving the youth advice, I'm ready. <laughs> um, another thing is that we don't, there are mentors everywhere we go. And because just listening to you, I'm like, oh, wow, actually, you know what? You could be the next mentor for someone else. And yeah. um, every space that you're in, there's someone who can mentor you. You know, it's just about asking for help. Exactly. And we're so afraid to do that because also, you know, there's ego. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's not even just about asking. It's also it's, yeah. um, having access to such people. Mm. And with mm. the this one I provide, we provide sort of events where we put like, your CEOs of these large companies, mm. you know, people who are in high profile business and put them in that same room with you. Exactly. And you're able to meet and interact with them. And that's yeah. how you also get mentorship. You know, that's how you build relationships. Yeah. Um, and like I said, it's about putting yourself out there. So mm. there's no you saying you don't have a mentor, but you're not there out seeking for exactly. a mentor. You know what exactly. I mean? Exactly. Um, and it's, it's, a, it's a trial and error thing. Mm. It's not the first one you meet is someone that can be your mentor, you know, someone that can relate to you better, someone you know, can speak to you better, can you know, understand sort of your struggle. Those are sort of things, and it's a, it's a trial and error thing. Exactly. And the more people you meet, the more chances, the more likely you'll get mm. a, a mentor. Seek and you shall find. Exactly. Before I get to my last question, sure. <laughs> I just want to say again, once again, thank you to properties.com. We are in Santon Hotel Apartments for giving us this beautiful space. I mean, the view behind us, City of Gold, literally definition of Igoli. So, uh, Tumelo, we spoke a lot about people, you know, short-term, long-term goals. And I know that you've, you, you're working towards something, yeah. which is amazing. You've got your end goal. What would you say is your short-term goal? My short-term goal now is to sell a lot of properties. Yeah, that's <laughs> no, no, fair. You know, in the real estate, yeah, I mean, look, um, I, like you said, I've just been uh, two years in here. Uh, I've learned a lot of people who've been here for five, six, eight mm. years and how successful they be. So um, mm -hmm. um, short-term, medium-term is to be a really successful real estate agent. Mm -hmm. um, I think especially in that sector, we don't get a lot of young people in true, it. True, true. So I, I want to give that sort of different feel, different diversity, mm. you know, um, you know, there's just a reboot in that industry mm. and just put that young element into it. Um, but yeah, just to be successful in the real estate agency as well as just get my qualification and be a, a principal uh, Yeah, like agent. you said, yeah. y'all are popping up a lot, eh? <laughs> These young real estate agents doing the things. So yes, uh, you know, you did say, oh yes, a lot of the young estate agents are popping up, which is amazing. And because you work with a lot of young people as well, yeah. you know, in the organization, what, would, what is some of the feedback that you get from the grade 11s and 12s when you're done working with them? Yeah, look, positive feedback. I mm. think, like I said, these people are curious beings yeah. and I think when they see opportunity like this they, they, they feel really appreciated. Yeah. Um, we also target um, you know not just any schools like underprivileged schools as well when they don't have access to such mm -hmm. um, and we do our presentations there so we get to reach out to them and I feel like being able to get out there and stuff is they, they appreciate it a lot so um, they want to do a lot more um, with us which is good uh, but also in just in the real estate uh, agent space as well because uh, as you say, a lot of them are popping up. So <laughs> I was fortunate enough to be in the uh, Real Estate Industry Summit. And a lot of people really uh, watched that show and I got approached mm -hmm. um, by people in that industry who are saying, you know, how can you, you know, build that sort of awareness and build that sort of interest in that yeah. sector for young people. Yeah. Um, so I'm talking to a lot of people who nice. are, um, are you, know, uh, you know, asking for my input and mm -hmm. how they can in their sort of sectors and where they are, um, be able to to build that interest for mm. young people. So I think the feedback is good. Uh, we are a fairly young organization, yeah. but we do want to um, grow and big and just you know reach out to the rest of the country. We currently mm. operate in Cape Town and in, in Joburg. Yeah. Um, but we want to you know in future be in Durban, in Port Elizabeth, in the yeah. Northwest. You know all these other places and just reach out because I really think there is a need mm. uh, uh, for this. So yeah. If anything, it's great that they're curious. You know, there's interest. There's interest. There's, there's hope. And I think hope is so, that word hope is so important because a lot of, um, like you say, you know, you work in underprivileged communities yes. and a lot of these kids come from homes where we lose hope. Exactly. And to get someone like you come in, you know, to just remind us that, wait, my dreams are they're valid. attainable. I can reach them. They're you valid. Know? Yeah, yeah, they're valid. 
Um, and also just um, on that note of short-term goals and long-term goals, sure. right? Um, you have a long-term goal, you said, you know, become the yes. principal. And um, is there anything else with regards to, I'm going to bring it back to you now sure. as a person, you right, you know, like to Melo, what is your long-term goal? Yeah, so long-term goal um, is financial freedom, mm -hmm. is your, your generational wealth, is leaving a legacy. Mm -hmm. um, I think I, 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 I like using the example of, you know, like the Maboning precinct oh, yeah. and how they've developed in the city of Joburg. Um, mm -hmm. And it, 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 it's a thought that I had in my head is, you know, around the world, there's always these big metropolitans, these big cities, you yeah. know, like your New Yorks, your Londons. And then you look at our Johannesburg CBD and you're like, there's, there's potential for that, yeah. you know? So one of my very big ambitious sort of goals is to redevelop uh, CBD uh, of Joburg and oh, wow. to become, you know, sort of that hub, that mm. metropolitan, you know, you know, good access to, to accommodation, offices, transport, yeah. um, that it's safe as well. Those are sort of things I, you know, I, I want to look into, uh, into doing. So that's mm. sort of like my long-term goal. But yeah, the, the main thing of it is just, is just leaving a legacy. Mm. I like that. I also like that you, you've got a kind of province that you're focusing on and this is your goal. Your goal is here. Exactly. And yeah, and again, you know, valid. Your dreams and your goals are valid to yeah. me. Um, <laughs> uh, I wanted to talk a little bit more about, because we still, I want to play a little game with you sure, and, you sure. know time is also getting um coming to us <laughs> um you know i know that you've only been in the real estate industry for about two years now actually before i even ask that question uh you started during the pandemic what i, I know that it was obviously a very difficult time to start right so looking at when you started to now let's talk about that journey and has it is it better has it improved are you more excited yeah. about being in this industry now how is that that shift. Yeah, so like, yeah, I did start right in the heat of a pandemic. Yeah. Which was crazy. It's a crazy thing to start something entirely <laughs> new um, at that time. And now it all was difficult. Yeah. And I think as well in the property, in the real estate um, industry, a lot of times you, you learn as you go. Mm. And if you're not exposed to the day-to-day -day operations of real estate, then you're not learning. Right. Um, so it's more about taking initiative yourself and finding ways on how to sort of, you know, learn the industry and, and, and grow. And um, going into to the following year, I mean, things are a lot better, mm. but I've also seen how the industry itself has evolved because of the pandemic. You know, a lot of things which were impossible to do can now happen online, you know. Oh, I mean, yeah. one important thing about my, my industry is, is meeting people face to face. Yeah. Um, when you wanna buy a property or rented, you obviously wanna have a look at it. Exactly. So what happens when now you're not able to do yeah. that? Does now everything stop? Um, but no, there's been very good initiatives like your virtual tour, um, 3D uh, mm. sort of videos that you get on your on your listings. Now people can look through that. Right. Uh, we've now made paperless contracts now that you can mm. sign, so you no more have to sign things. Can all be sent online. So there's been a, a very big shift technologically, yeah. which has been good, which has been yeah. needed. Um, and yeah, uh, but it's been much better, I think. Now that things have been uh, better, it's been it's been it's been more of a learning curve. Right. Um, because now when I'm seriously into the industry and learning about it and I, I think I've, I've been doing pretty well. Mm. Yeah. And I'm sure you're learning new things every day because you know you come from working from home, working exactly. from behind a screen to finally being like on the ground mm. and you're obviously learning things about yourself as well. Exactly. Um, what is it that this job has taught you about yourself? Uh, that I'm not as patient as I thought I was. <laughs> <laughs> no look, I, it's, it's a patient game yeah. and you know, it's a very demanding job mm -hmm. as well. Um, I, I operate in the Bryanston and Rosebank area, but sometimes I meet clients from Aboning, Cosmo, right. um, and uh, you know, in Randburg. So it's, it's diversifying, mm -hmm. um, be able to be accessible. Yeah. And I think communication as well is very important oh, yeah. in, the, in the line of business. Um, and yeah, that's, that's, the, that's the big thing about us, especially closing the deals. Yeah. Um, and yeah, being informative as well. Uh, being with the current times, especially now with the markets, obviously the markets now haven't been how they are because of the pandemic. So yeah. it's, 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 it's trying to understand those things as well. Mm. So yeah, but uh, it's, a, it's a patient game, it's a very demanding game, but I love my job. So right. I don't mind working Monday to Monday. Um, you don't mind teaching yourself to be patient. I don't mind teaching myself to be patient. I don't mind learning these things. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I want to find out a little bit. Let's take it back to our first time home buyers. You know, those new property investors who are trying to take that leap of faith and make that move. Sure. Um, within the short time that you've been in here, you've seen mistakes, you've seen 
achievements made that were out yeah. of this world. Uh, what were some of the mistakes that you think first time home buyers should look out for? Yeah, no, um, I think what comes to mind uh, is the terms of the affordability, mm. right? You know, of affording the home, how, if you afford it or not. I think one very good advice is to always have a pre-qualification. Oh, yeah. Know what you can afford. Um, and I say this because I'd be going to a viewing on one of the properties that you're interested in and it's worth two million and mm -hmm. you're happy, you're excited and you want to sign. Mm. And then when it comes to that, we find out that you can't afford. Right. You know what I mean? So I think it's very important to uh, get a pre-qualification, know what you can afford. Mm -hmm. um, another mistake is when you're buying a home, you're not just, the listing price is not your only expense, right? right? There's transfer costs, mm. there's attorney costs. When you own a home, you need to uh, you need to pay rates in Texas per month. You need yeah. to pay levy, so you need to know all those things as well mm. to take account for your affordability, mm. right? If you have one million in the bank, you don't need to buy a one million rent right. home, right? Because there's those expenses. Are things, so that's yeah. another mistake that they make. They buy a home and they find out that rates are this much, and then they can't afford that. Yeah. You know, so that's also very important. Um, also, do your due diligence. Um, mm. I think when you're looking and buying a home, don't just view it once or twice and then you're ready to buy it. Go for the first time or the sixth time, you know, yeah. it's very important, especially when you're buying your older homes as well. Oh, yeah. Do your checks. Um, it's, 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 it's highly advised. Mm. Uh, once you get that home with those issues, it becomes your problem. Mm. Now. You can't go back to the seller and be like, oh, True. look, your house is falling apart. It's yeah. now your home. It's yours. You need to deal with it. So <laughs> that's, that's one of the sort of mistakes that people make. They just go, run into it, and then they end up um, having these issues that were, mm. you know, were, that were, were there before. Um, and yeah, I think those are what some of the mistakes that come into my mind. I think the other thing is also first time buyers going into investing. Yeah. Uh, again, it's important to do your due diligence. Mm. There's no point in investing in a home and it running at a loss because now your rental is not low enough, right? You exactly. need to make sure you do that homework. Yeah. Uh, it needs to be worthwhile for you, especially when you're going to investing. Mm. Um, so yeah. All I heard was you need to have patience. You need to have patience. You need to have I, I think what, what we repeat quite often on the show is that property is not a short term. It's not a short term. It is a long haul thing. You know, yes. take take your time with it. Even if it even if you it's your first home exactly. or if it's your first investment. And you're right, be smart about it. do your own research, you mm. know. Take the time to, to take that step and go do your own research. Um, um, I love the fact that you brought in first time investors as well because you know, there are a lot of times when uh, first time home buyers automatically become First time investors, investors yeah. exactly. Um, oh, my question is the pros and the cons of purchasing your, your first home. Yeah. Um, also some advice for some of our first time buyers or first time investors that are watching. Sure. So like I said, uh, one of the biggest cons is property is expensive. Yes, yes, <laughs> so yes. So going into investing as in it is, you know, it is, you need a lot of capital, but there are ways around it, of course, mm. um, especially like with your, with your mortgage bonds and your SA home loans, there are opportunities as well to be able to afford that. Right. Um, and I mean, another con again is, like we said, it's not a short term thing, it's a long term thing. So they, they need to be patient. When you think about investment, it's not a quick, in a month, you get all your returns from your investment. It takes time. So when you're investing in your rental, for example, you only realize sort of good returns after a year, after two years. Yeah. Right. But there's also a lot of um, work around that yeah. as well. You know, it's not you just get the property, you just get it, and that's it. So there's a lot of work into it. Um, but pros is like I said, investing in property. Uh, even if you're not investing, even if you're just buying home to settle in, it's an investment. Yeah. Um, it's low volatility. You know, when your economy goes down, most of the time they still keep mm. their prices. Um, so whether you're investing or it's your property, it's it's a good investment sort of strategy. Um, Another pro as well, I mean, this is obviously in terms of buying versus rental. Yeah. Um, is, I, I see it this way. When you buy a home, right, and you pay your bond, that's sort of like you buy, you, you're paying rent anyways for your yeah, own home. Yeah. But like that money is towards your investment. Exactly. It's not towards someone else's. So mm -hmm. I think that's one of the big plus of actually owning instead of, yeah. instead of renting. Um, but yeah, my advice is, um, I keep mentioning, is always, do your research. Mm -hmm. um, if you're speaking to a real estate agent about purchasing, speak to more real estate agents. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of the time people don't even realize is when you are a buyer mm -hmm. and you, uh, you know, you, you're making a business with a real estate agent, their primary client is the seller. Yeah. Right. And they yeah. want to uh, get that house as, uh, sold as soon as, as possible. possible yeah. um, and so a lot of the 
how do I say, it's sort of like the customer interaction with the buyer is not as great as it should be or they don't provide the necessary information that's, that's needed. So I think it's always important to speak to one or two other real estate agents mm -hmm. um, before you go into deals. Uh, therefore, just to, to um, sort of help your, your interest into that and sort of safeguard yourself in yeah. sort of such transactions. I think that's very important. Um, but yeah, do your diligence, do your, do your research uh, and make sure you, you afford as well. Uh, and yeah, I think that's sort of the advice yeah. I can give to them. Maybe. I think this also goes hand in hand with some of the mistakes that you've seen. Mm. Um, you know, to take note of what Tumelo said and then listen to the mistakes and then go find out how we can make that better. Exactly. Uh, Tumelo, because of time, I have a quick game. But before sure. I even get to the game, Black Friday is coming up, right? Yeah. If there was anything, any single thing in the world that you would like to be a part of the Black Friday deal, what could that be? It's a PlayStation 5. <laughs> a PlayStation 5? Yes. <laughs> I need that. Really? Oh, I need it. Not need even it. like... Like... A, a house? A house for Black Friday? Yeah, what if they put like a property up and they were like, hey, this is a million, but get it today and send them for 500,000. Look, that would be a good investment. Better right. than the PlayStation 5 for sure. Um, <laughs> but I think Black Friday is such an impulse thing. Like I said, you can't yeah. have impulse buy, especially with property. Yeah. Can so... we get the PlayStation 5? <laughs> we have it here for you. Thank you. Oh. Thank you. Thank I'm you guys. Joking, we don't. Um, but yeah, so yeah. Black Friday is an impulse thing. Uh, it's, True. You're going to get the deal now. It's something that you haven't planned for. So you don't want to do such impulse buys in terms of property. Uh, so that's why I shy away from that. Oh, uh, yeah. So that's actually five, a very good point. Definitely for, for my mental health. <laughs> also for my mental health. So to me, the game goes like this. We have sure. another show, um, our, part of our podcast, which is the Home Shopper Show, okay. hosted by Chad. That's every Monday and Friday at 8 p.m. little marketing there. Um, so basically how the show works is, um, uh, how this game works, sorry, sure. is I'm going to show you three properties that they've been to around Johannesburg. Okay. You said you're in the Bryanston area. It's Bryanston, four ways. That's the only clue I'm going to give you. It is in the north of Johannesburg. All you have to do is get the price okay or be within like within very close range, range sure, of the no price problem. okay Come. interesting game very interesting <laughs> the first one a minute of it right yeah I'll give you a minute grass, the, yeah, yeah no that's just grass <laughs> okay it's like this a question please mm -hmm. it's quite big mm. tell us more about what you think I mean, I'm, I'm calculating, I'm calculating. <laughs> I think I have a price. You have a price already? Yeah. We haven't even showed you the bathroom. Oh, no, well, no, no, bathroom, let's yeah? trust you. <laughs> Hold on, let me check the price. Okay. Uh, this is in Blair Ethel. Blair Ethel? Oh, yeah. wow, wonderful. Yeah, it's a big property. Looks like it's got a big yard as well. Uh-huh. A lot of rooms. Uh, Christian feel. I... I'm guessing along between 12, 10 million to 12, so I think 12 million is the more, yeah, I'll go with that. Very close, it's 13. Very close. I mean, if you get all I just three. just saw the garden, by the way. Uh, yeah, all he saw was the garden, that's correct. <laughs> if you get all three right, we might get you a PlayStation oh, 5. Yes. Let's do this. Okay, your next one. Cool. Oh, wait, let me just get the price away. Okay. Okay, it's an apartment. Mm -hmm. This one is in Hyde Park. Okay. <laughs> this one I definitely see. Need to see inside. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Hmm, Hyde Park. Okay, it's big. It's good. I think I have a price. Mm -hmm. Can I ask how many bedroom it is though? No. I, the only clue I'm giving you is the area. I think it's a two bedroom. If it is in Hyde Park, eight million, seven. Oh my God, that's so close. It's nine. <sighs> nine I'm point three. <laughs> um, let me quickly get you. It was a three bed, three bath. Three bed, so yeah. I would have went oh, higher. Oh, you would have gone higher. I would have gone higher. So I said Ugh, two I'm bed, sorry. one bed. It's around eight, seven. Okay, next one, River Club Santon. Um, what? Do you know that? Of course. <laughs> you know it very well, I'm this assuming. This is my job. <laughs> okay, let's go. You can actually just do the first few seconds. Cool. It goes through the whole house. Okay. River Club Santon. It uh, looks like a, it's not a sectional title, okay. 
River Club, no? Yeah. Uh, that's, uh, I don't know how many rooms there is as well. I'll tell you. This time I can give you a clue of the rooms. Okay, the rooms. Okay, so I've given you the area, the rooms, I'll tell you. So this one, oh, it's a mansion, okay, it's a five bed, five bath. Five bed, five bath, okay. Contemporary styled. River Club Santon. Oof, it's a tough one actually. Uh, so at first I thought it was a sectional, but it looks like it's in an estate. Uh huh. Uh, five bed, five bath. I think I'm gonna go for six. No. No. I'm gonna give you one more chance. Ah, okay. So it's a higher. Very, yeah, yeah. It's, it's more it's high. higher. Okay. So Not too high. You're close. Yeah. So I think it's your your nine million, ten million. Yeah. Eight point nine. Eight point nine. Oh, well okay. done. Yeah, thanks. Hey. <laughs> I think I did well for <laughs> no, you did the very well. Not, yeah, and for just knowing the area. Yeah. Um, a lot of first-time home buyers or first-time investors. I think what I'd like for you to end off the show with is sure. tips. Since we've just looked at at property, and you know, you look at the amount of bedrooms, you look yes. at the structure. You know, you, what are some tips to look for? Yeah. Uh, when browsing your first home, or, for sure. Yeah. So, I mean, you probably heard this before, but location, location, location. Yes, yes. That's your ultimate thing. Um. And I mean, obviously, most of the things is based on preference, but ideally the big ones are your kitchen. Mm. So your kitchen size and kitchen design, mm -hmm. your bathrooms mm -hmm. and what they have. So some may have both a shower and a bath, just a bath or just a shower. Yeah. Um, and if it's en suite or not. Uh, storage space, which is mm. very important. So it's your wardrobes as well as in your kitchen, um, those sort of areas. And I think your extra spaces like your home offices as well right. especially in these times is something that's very important people exactly. look into that um, but yeah it depends if you're looking in an apartment or you're looking at a home that has a mm. garden there's sort of different factors you need to look into right um, but yeah it's mostly what it offers if it's yeah. a house with a yard does it have a pool mm. uh, does it have a garden and can you be able to maintain that garden exactly. that's another thing as well um, mm. and if it's apartments your vantage point uh, your balcony area where it's facing, it's not facing another building. Right. Um, those sort of things. So those are the kind of things that you need to look at. Notes into. to yeah. take, you know, <laughs> take notes, guys. Some of the notes, a long list, but... Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much, Tamilo. Thank I really appreciate me. that you took the time out and spent the day with us and shared your knowledge. I think it's so important, you know, you continuing to do what you do at the organization, sure. pass on this knowledge, you know, share the tips and the tricks of the property industry that we're in because it can get a little bit difficult and daunting. It's such a daunting task and mm -hmm. you've just made it a little bit easier. So I really appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for having me. Thank you for the opportunity. Um, I love platforms like this, again, to mm. you know, spread awareness about this and I'm, mm. I'm definitely for it. And um, yeah. Thanks. Sure. Thank you so much. To our viewers at home, thank you so much. We'll see you guys again next week live. That's Wednesday at 8 p.m. Take care.